everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello everyone. Welcome back to class. Sorry, we're getting a little bit of a late start on the art chat. I had a few things I had to take care of, um, including um, I still have a um, I still have a baby this time around. Um, hopefully, she'll stay asleep for most of the class. Um, that's the hope. And. Um, if you aren't following me on Instagram, uh, you won't know that I did this today. I did the rest of that. So now I have a full wall of canvases um, <laughs> for, uh, for my backdrop. So that's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, um, let me know where you're painting from. Let me know if you're here in the comments. I would love to see who's painting with me. Um, yeah. I'm excited to paint. Um, just a note that this class, I will not be teaching how to draw a car. It is very intricate, um, but I do have a traceable. It takes about, it took about five minutes to trace it. Um, it would probably take a, a good few hours to draw it and get all the proportions right. Um, so if you are interested in the traceable um i will i will link that down below for you um if you don't have a trace if you don't have a traceable um and you want to just draw it um feel free to come back later and you know so you can take your time drawing it on there and then you can come back later and paint it with me because i leave all my classes up um hi cindy watching from Texas and we'll have paint later. Just watch for now. Awesome. Glad to have you with us. Oh, it has been a bit crazy. Um, just this, these last few weeks have been so crazy. Um, cause I got COVID and then we like quarantined immediately cause my other daughter is high risk. So I was with the baby and then she got COVID. <laughs> obviously we're quarantining together. I tried my best to wear masks and stuff like that whenever I was around her, but it still got to her. So we are hoping to end quarantine within the next couple of days because she's on day like, I don't know, 10 or 12 to 11 or 12. Um, and, but she's still testing positive. So we don't know if that means that she's still, you know, contagious. So we're t trying to talk to her with doctors and see like where we're going with it. Um, hello, Counterfusion. Hi, welcome in. Hello, Mike Anderson from San Diego. <laughs> yeah, it's silly. Um, let's see. I don't have anything to do during, usually I will, um, usually I will do my traceable while we're chatting, but I did it beforehand because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take because um, there is a lot of intricacies with it. But let me get my paints out. I haven't done that yet. <sighs> Goodness. I'm 
just excited to paint. I, it's always my happy place when I get to paint. Um, I have a blue in here that's like perfect for this. I don't know if I have enough of it though. Um, hi Kelly from Charleston. Coming from three weeks of COVID here. Mm. Yeah, thankfully I I didn't get hit too hard from it. Um, I only had about three days three days of light symptoms. Um, I was just really tired for the most part, tired of congestion. But I didn't I didn't get a fever. I only had a headache one day, and I feel like Amelia had even less symptoms than I did. She just slept a lot and was congested. But. I'm gonna see if I have enough in here because this is like a perfect blue um, for what we're doing but I don't know if I have enough in here otherwise I'll just make it yeah, yeah I got enough I'll work with it <laughs> if not I'll uh, make my own that's why I say like I usually don't put specific colors down unless it's like I don't know, phthalo blue, which is like a darker, unless it's, unless I plan to use a specific color. I usually don't put specific colors in the description because it's like really whatever blue you got, you can always change it. You know, if you have a dark, if you have dark blue, you can lighten up with white, um, tone it down with brown, um, all sorts of that. I'm going to get out my red, my white, my black, <laughs> red, white, blue. <laughs> And then I am going to be using a brown. I've been low on my raw umber, so I've just been using my burnt umber recently. Kelly, your COVID symptoms, have they, are they still going strong or is it just like the cough? Because I hear the cough can last for weeks. Oh, I did have a little bit of a cough, but it's like, I think it's phased out as of now. It's been like three weeks for me. Um, hi, Rhonda. Hi from Fort McMurray, Alberta. Oh, okay. Will this be available to view after recording? Yes. Um, all my live classes um, are available after. Um, are available after. So... I don't take them down. I know some artists do, and then you have to pay for them, but I'm like, eh. I have my Patreon, so. Um, I think, let me look at the picture. I think that's all we're gonna have. I think that's all I put. Maybe, maybe I'll get my yellow out, just in case we need to tint anything a little bit to off-white. But, white, black, brown, blue, red, yellow. Primary mm -hmm. colors. And even if you didn't have brown, you could make brown with the primary colors. So, <coughs> I feel like you don't even need that. <coughs> That's all I'm going to do. I, um, I recently got some new brushes um, off of Amazon. And you'll know that I... Um, I've talked about the um <laughs> the fan brush before everyone probably has known this but this is the fan brush that came with that kit that I always talk about and I recommend it on Facebook I think it's really great I've had it for a year and it's held its own um it's only like I think it's like 15 or 20 dollars but this is what it comes with it comes with a nylon fan brush and I feel like I can't even use it because as soon as you get any sort of either water or paint on it it just clumps up and it just it doesn't it doesn't work um so i went on amazon and found short handle hog bristle and look how stiff it is so i'm really excited for um i'm really excited to use these and they seem good quality they seem a lot better quality than these. Um, so, um, 
whenever I end up using that, probably in future classes. I don't know if I'm going to use it this time around, but um, if I use it in future classes, I'll make sure to link it down below so you guys can check them out. I also, I think it's from the same, yeah, it's from the same company. I got some liner brushes that I'm super excited to use about. I've only had the one that came in that kit, and I've been wanting to get some more, and so I'm excited to use those. Um, awesome, thank you. You are welcome. I'm cooking some for the kids, yeah. Yeah, it's always a hard time because it's like, this time is essentially nap time for my kids, so it works best for me, but I know for a lot of people on the East Coast, it's like during dinner. Um, so it's not super ideal um, for them, but you can't really please everyone. Thankfully, my classes do stay up, so you can always come back and watch them. Oh, also, if you wanted to change the color of the car, you can. Obviously, it does not have, like, you could change these colors. Um, it does not have to be blue. It could be your favorite color. It could be a red car. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be blue if you don't want it to be blue. I think I do need to get out my weight, though, because I don't have... That's black. My daughter's like going in and out of sleep right now, so I'm like, stay asleep. <laughs> I just realized that I never took a trace of pull off the back of my canvas. Do any of you do that? I was putting up a canvas earlier <coughs> on the wall and I turned it over and it still had the trace of pull on the back. Yeah. Just gonna just gonna take that off. Can you imagine me like selling my canvas and it's like got the trace of pull on the back. <laughs> that wouldn't happen because I will sign the back of them when I sell them, but I just thought it was funny. It's like, okay. Um, this is what the traceable looks like. I have two different sizes. Um, I have one for an 11 by 14, which is what I'm using. And then if you are painting on a smaller canvas, uh, so like an eight by 12, I also have that one. You could use the eight by 12 for the um, eight by 10 too. Um, the car would just be like a tad bit bigger, but yeah, super come in handy. I've always read that some artists think that it's cheating to use a um, traceable, but I've always been in the mindset that traceable is just another tool that artists use to create, um, and like a traceable doesn't paint it for you like you as the artist still have to create the art that goes over the traceable it just helps you get the process started because for a lot of people it can be daunting to look at a um it can be daunting to look at a blank canvas so traceables are always nice to you know start the process okay um it is time for class. I'm going to play that beginning one more time and then we'll get into class. See you on the other side. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will 
I'll answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another live class. I am super excited for this one. We are painting a car. I've never painted a car before. Um, but we are going to have fun in this kind of snowy, wintry um, painting. So let's go ahead and go over the supplies first. Um, oh, one note. Um, I am not teaching how to draw a car for this class. Um, specifically, I'm teaching how to paint it. So if you um, do not have access to the traceable, I linked it down below as well as in the live chat. Uh, you can either do that and come back or you can draw it real fast. I know that for me it took at least five minutes for me to draw the traceable on there, um, let alone the hours it would have taken me to draw it. So um, if you have not done that, definitely either start that or you can always come back later and paint it um, because I do keep all of my classes. Uh, on my YouTube. Okay, let's go over some supplies real fast. I have a 11 by 14 stretched canvas, which means I have the sides top and bottom. So don't forget to paint those if you are if you have a stretched canvas. And then I have my paint. So I'm using Hippie Crafter acrylic paint. Um, any full body acrylic paint will do if you are using the fluid acrylics. Uh, Try not to use as much water um, that I will use because these are thick and I have to water them down. If you have the fluid acrylics, you won't have to water them down. You can just put them straight on the canvas. So for colors, I have my white, my black, and then brown and yellow are for tinting. And then the two other colors that you're going to need are up to you. So in the picture, they have red and um, I have this pretty blue, it's called lake blue. But if you want to have a different color, that is totally fine. You can just um, just substitute <coughs> whatever color you're using um, or my color that I'm using with the color that you would like to use, okay? Um, you'll need some large brushes for the background and then there are there is a lot of detail work. Um, so you need a few small brushes. I will let you know what I'm using. Um, but by all means, you don't have to use exactly what I'm using, especially if you don't have it. Just would use what you have um, and we'll go through it. Um, it is the second class of the month, so I do have um, I do have a Patreon art giveaway. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. All right, so this is um, this is just a giveaway for art supplies that I do to just kind of give back to the community who supports me um, over on Patreon. So uh, tier doesn't matter. So if you just support me, then you and you have your address, then you um, get put into this little giveaway that I do. Okay, so we're going to do that. Let's see who it is. It is Denise. Carnes, I don't know how to say your last name, but Denise, um, congratulations. I will send you, um, let's see, let me get back to my program. Um, I'm sending you some palette knives, so that will be great. And let's get started with class. If you have any questions whatsoever during class, please make sure to, um, to comment below and I will get to them as soon as I can, okay? Are we ready to paint? I'm excited to paint, okay. Uh, the first colors that I'm going to be getting out, most of this canvas is white, which is great. Um, I will suggest still painting it white because there's a couple um, like kind of mountainy things in the back 
um, that give it texture and kind of put it in its place. And then down here, it's um, <clears throat> there's like some not dirty snow, um, but it kind of looks dirty, but it's um, just the shadow snow. Um, so the colors that I'm getting out right now are going to be my white. Let me move this over a little bit. <coughs> I'm going to get out my white, my brown, and then probably some black. So I'm getting out a lot of white because most of this, again, is covered in white. And then I'm going to get out a tiny bit of black over here. I'm only getting out a little bit because most of the darker color I probably won't do until a little bit later. Um, so I want to make sure that I don't put out a ton of black and then it dries by the time I get to it. So I'm only putting out little bits of the other colors because you won't need a whole lot for the background. Um, all right. For the background, I typically uh, will use a filbert brush for the background. Um, if you have your drawing on here, what we're going to do is we are going to outline um, with a liner brush some of the details so that we don't lose it when we go over the background. If you do not have a drawing on there and you're going to just free paint it, don't worry about this step. Just wait until we get you just do the whole background um, and then you'll come back over it and just paint it as it is. But if you do have um, a traceable on there, we don't want to lose all of that line work that we uh, that we traced on there. So go ahead and grab a um, a liner brush. And I'm just going to go in, um, because most of it is blue, I'm going to go in with my blue. Um, so whatever color you're using, let's say you're going to do it red, um, go in with a red. And when you're doing this, it does not need to be super bright. It only needs to be bright enough to whereas if you cover it with white, which we probably will be covering most of this area with white to get you know in the background you're going to want to um, have it dark enough so that you can see it through the white but not so dark that you can't cover it up with other colors um, that's also why we're doing a um, why we're doing it in blue and not black because blue is easier to cover up So I'm taking some water, some white, and some blue. And I'm mixing it just with my liner brush. If you don't have a liner brush, just get a small, um, just a small round brush will be fine. I'm just gonna mix that together. Um, the trick of this is to make sure that you have a good amount of water in it so that it flows really easily. Um, even if you're using the fluid acrylics, you'll still need to water it down just a little bit so that it's really easy to move on the canvas. I'm going to darken mine just a little bit so that you can see it easier. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over particularly the um, like the outer edge of the car and then any details that are close to the edges um, and if it doesn't go on that easy then you probably need to add a little bit more water because it should go on very easy this should be a, a fairly quick process and when you go over it try to go um, Try to kind of go on your line, like on the inside of your line, so that when you try to cover it up with the actual paint that we want to paint it with, you're not making everything bigger. Does that make sense? So if this is your line, you're going to kind of draw or like go over it on the inside of the line so that when you put paint on it, 
you're covering up that line and not making it all like a ton bigger. Also, if you hear baby noises, including the fart that just happened, that is my daughter, <laughs> not me. Um, she's awake and playing, so you might hear baby noises and rattles and everything. How is everyone doing? I know you're probably um, focused on painting, but if you have a chance to let me know how you're doing, I would love to know. Ooh, there's a bug. Hi, Lynn. Excited to join you for the first time. Yeah, glad to have you. I mean, I know some artists have time to paint like two or three times a week. That's definitely not my life right now. <laughs> I have time every other week. It's always hard when you have small kids. Um, they take up a lot of time, but it's also what I want to be doing, so I always try to find a balance between uh, work that I love and I adore doing. I would do it even if it wasn't my work, but then also being a mom. All right, so I'm also gonna go in here and inside the windows um, because we'll need to kind of get some of the background in there as well. So I'm just going to put some of this detail in here. And I have to say, these are um, some of my new liner brushes and I am quite enjoying them. I can get really really small with it which is great. I mainly bought them so that I could have a tiny brush to do my signature because the one that I have is like freeing and it's not. It doesn't work. <laughs> I think the hard thing about if I were to draw a car is because with cars everything is very structured because like you have a lot of straight lines um, and with it being a little bit more of a perspective because of the angle of the car 
say hello to my baby. <laughs> um, it's hard to, I mean, unless you're like working with a ruler and um, know perspectives really well, it's sometimes it can be hard. We should bring her over. Do you guys want to see her? She's hanging out now. Let me know. I can scoot her over. Um, I can also... If... Aaron, if um, if it's grainy, make sure that you have um, the settings, uh, like the resolution settings, um, to like the highest it can, which is usually 1080. <laughs> Phones. Yeah, yeah, I would suggest just um, making sure that your resolution is at the highest. A lot of time that can just, that can make 100% difference. I'm just working on the outline of this. All right, that's probably all I need to do. If you had the time, like if you were, um, if you were watching the replay and you wanted just to go over the whole thing, um, you could you could do that too. You don't need to stop at that outline. But the outline is really the only thing that we need to do, um, just because. That's the only thing that we're really going to cover up. Um, I'm going to do one more line here. And that's going to be this one, just in case it gets covered up. If you don't have a good set of line, liner brushes, I would highly recommend um, getting them. Hi, baby. Wanna say hi? Do you wanna say hi? Do you wanna say hi? No, you just wanna stare at the screen? <laughs> at least now people can see me. You can see them, huh? Hi. Now she just gets to stare at you. <laughs> um. Ian wants me to say hello. Hello, Ian. Hello, Ian's mom, that apparently is also watching this. <laughs> hello, everyone. Okay, so we've... Uh, thank you, guys. Um, okay, so we've 
done the outline now what we get to do is do the background so we're going to grab whatever large brush you want to use i use a filbert because i tend to see less lines but we're not doing we're not doing a lot of um blending so i don't think it really matters um i am going to make i am going to make a color that i want to put down here uh, we can always add to it later but getting a base color for that is uh, real quick will be helpful so I'm going to grab a small brush, grab some white, because that is the base. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of black, a tiny bit of brown. So probably like if I have 10 parts white, probably like one part brown and one part black. And I'm just going to mix that together. I might need it a little bit darker. Yeah, I'm going to make it a little bit darker, add a little bit more black. And we can always make it darker by adding layers, but getting that first getting that first layer on there is good. Okay, I'm going to rinse out my brush. And just a note on your brushes, try not to ever leave your uh, ever leave your brushes in the water cuz that um, over time water seeps up into the furrow which is this metal thing um and then gets it loosens the glue and then you'll have bristles coming out so prolong your brushes don't leave them in the water all right i'm gonna get my brush wet i'm using a large filbert i'm gonna get, get it wet grab some of this white and i'm just going to coat the entire top <laughs> You are not, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. I can barely see what I'm doing. So um, sometimes it's helpful if you are going to be painting it white to paint it a off-white color of a base. Like maybe like a, a maybe a, like a little bit of a blue. I could even add a tiny bit of blue here at the top. I kind of want to do that. I'm going to. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of blue at the top. Just ever so slightly. You don't have to do this. And I'm just going to blend that in. But for me, it just helps me to be able to see it. But yeah, if you want to, you can always um add a separate color as a base and then you can go over it with white that way you know that you got it all um another way that you can make sure that you got it all is to um is to turn it towards the light like figure out to kind of turn your canvas towards the light and then you can see um where it's all wet Um, I am using an 11 by 14 canvas. I did already say it, but that's okay. Um, and if I'm going to be covering the entire canvas, I usually won't prime it. Um, unless, of course, I want to prime it to make sure that I've gotten it all, um, that sort of thing. But no, I, I usually don't prime it. Um, the only time I usually prime a canvas is if um, is if I plan on there being white spots. So for instance, the painting up in the corner, um, it's a very large canvas and I primed it at least once. Prop, I think I might've primed it twice um, with white paint just to make sure that I got it all before I even started on the wolf. Um, but that's because part of it was going to be white. Um, otherwise I don't, I usually don't prime. So I have a tiny bit, it's kind of hard to tell, but I have a tiny bit of blue at the top 
just to kind of, I don't know, bring some color in there. And then I'm just working my way around the canvas, making sure, I always forget this, but making sure to get the sides. I always forget it. I think it's partly due to the space I'm in because it's over here next to, um, it's over here next to my, um, like the wall, like the wall is like right here and that's just how my, my setup is. And so I don't, I don't really go over here. That's also one of the reasons why I can't use, um, professional brushes that are long or else they'll hit the camera. <laughs> Just, you know, behind the scenes things that you probably don't need to know, but it's funny. All right, so I'm going over, I'm making sure to go over my blue line. That's why we did it. Um, to make sure that I get, so that when I come over it with the car paint, um, it I know that I'm covering up like the background and that it's all going to be painted if I go up right to the line I might miss things and if your paint isn't if you're using full body acrylics and your paint isn't um, going on the canvas very easy just dip it a little bit in the water and then mix it with the paint before you put it on and that will help it move on your canvas. I'm going to do the bottom real fast. What's nice about a detailed painting like this in regards to the car is that the rest of the painting is really easy. So we're going to be able to spend like 90% of the class on the car, which is going to be great because we're going to need it. <laughs> And a little trick when you are, usually I say this when you're blending, but even when you're putting on the background, um, you want to make sure to, once you get the paint on your canvas, to go in long strokes to really uh, kind of just blend it out and make sure that um, you get clean strokes and that you don't have like bunches of, um, bunches of, paint, clumps of paint, um, just to make sure that you fan it out a little bit. So you get the paint on there and then I do some long strokes to make sure that it's all good. Um, I missed a line, but that's okay. Make sure I have some paint back here. And this, there's a little section right here. Now I'm going to work my way up the other side. Another way to do this is, um, I'm not sure how well, um, if you have transing, uh, the, if you have transfer paper, what you could do is do the background first and then use transfer paper to transfer on the image over your background onto your paint. Um, and then you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to uh, kind of pre-paint it and you wouldn't have to worry about your, um, losing any of your lines or anything like that. So that's also another way, but I know, I know not everybody has transfer paper. Um, so, This paint net brought to you by Baby Sounds.
And then I'm also going to go in here, grab some white, put that in the background. much all done with that paintbrush I'm going to rinse it out hello hi I'm going to rinse it out and change over to just a whoa I'm going to change over to just a um, small round brush and go in with this um, kind of grayish color that we did. I'll probably darken it later, but getting just a, a base of, um, of that grayish color on there. is kind of the, the kind of the mid tone for the the color underneath the car and I'm not making I'm not making the line um, like perfectly straight because you know it's kind of going up and down from from cars driving over it and footprints and all sorts of that stuff and the like So I'm just kind of blending it out a little bit. I got a little bit of water. I rinsed out my brush, got a little bit of water on it, and I'm just kind of blending just ever so slightly. Back in with some little bit of white. And we will work more on that once we have um, our car in. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see what a shadow should look like without, um, like without the car being put in there. I did go a little bit too far down or too far up with my shadow, so I'm gonna come back in with some white and kind of lower it just a bit. And then just blend it in a little bit. 
Wow. Really. All right. Um, let me know where everyone is at. I want to go ahead and create the medium tone color of my car. Excuse me. I'm trying to teach. I'm going to move her a little bit further away so it's not as loud. Because <laughs> she is a bit loud right now. Hi, Katie. Hopefully she's not as loud. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so we have, we have that. I'm gonna go ahead, while you guys are finishing up that, I'm going to kind of create the medium tone of my car. So if you're using a different color for your car, um, now is the time to you just use whatever color you're using. I'm gonna say blue, but obviously if you're using a different color, know that I mean whatever color you're using. Um, I'm going to first kind of just mix this blue, see what I have to work with. Now the medium blue that I'm looking for is if you look at the car, you have the highlights and then you kind of have like the darks. What I plan to do, now I need more blue for this. My blue is a little bit too bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my palette knife and I use this um, all the time for mixing. And I did not clean that last time I used it. So there's that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of brown. Now the reason I say brown is because it softens, it kind of dulls out the color so it's not so bright. So I'm, I'm going to grab some white and then a little bit of brown. And I'm going to mix that in. Not a whole lot of brown, just enough to kind of dull down the color. She's just trying to help. <laughs> She's trying to contribute to the lesson. She's saying, Mom, you're doing it all wrong. Let me help. <laughs> all right, mine is still very, very dark, so I still need to add more white. Brighten it up. So this kind of looks, this is about the color of a, of the dark. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to take half of it and split it. So I have, so now I have a dark color. And I'm going to now make a light color. So I was planning on making the light color first, or like the medium color. Um, but... I hadn't gotten dark dark enough yet so, so I have kind of a darker color and then I'm gonna try to make this color fairly light and I have enough brown in it so I'm not gonna touch it with the brown because I think it's the right color I think I like that I can always add I apologize for the chainsaw. If you've painted with me for any amount of time, you'll know that there is a training fire station um, next door, like out back. And sometimes they use chainsaws. 
so I apologize for that. Um. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm going to grab my trusty filbert, my kind of medium to small filbert. Um, I will probably be using this for the majority of filling in the car. I'm going to um, make sure that I have some white available. So I have my uh, like a dark color, like the darkest color that's probably going to be on this blue. I have my medium color and then any time where I need to like add some white highlights, which is mostly just on the hood here, I'm going to just add some white and we'll kind of like go from there. So I'm going to start because I'm right handed, I'm going to start from the back to the front and really just add this plain color. Um, just the base color and we'll add our highlights and lowlights. You can either do it as you go or you can come back and add it on top. might also be going back and forth between a filbert and a small round just so I can get some of these corners but again you don't have to use exactly what I use when I use it you can use what you know use what you have And just so that I keep certain lines, because um, I am going over all this, um, something that you can do, if you want to be able to see these lines, you can go over them in black before we start. But because they're not lines that I'm like going to be covering up with like a darker color, like black, um, as I go, I'm going to be incorporating um, lights and darks to keep these colors. So what I mean by that is um, you can add certain colors as you go. Like I just add a little bit of dark to contrast the light. Here, let me zoom in a little bit. So I, this is the light color. And this is the dark color and I went over just to create that line but then I can come back in with the light because that's actually what I want here and then what I did right here is I got a tiny bit of white and I just brushed down from that line so that I don't lose it but if you didn't want to do that that's totally fine you can always come back in and just kind of eyeball it and that's totally fine we're 
kind of doing like a like a base coat that we're gonna put um, we're gonna put details on it later I think I might even brighten up my base coat because it seems like it's still a little bit dry Did I say dry? I meant dark. That's weird. I'm just kind of playing with the colors and putting them on. I think I, I kind of changed how light my um, base coat was, so I was just kind of going over it a bit. Again, just by differentiating the color slightly and going over this line, you can keep in those details. What's cool about doing an old car like this is that it does, it is going to have quite a bit of texture. So if your colors aren't like, you know, matching up perfectly and um, like that's okay because we're, again, we're going to be adding texture on top of this and kind of playing with the different colors. So don't worry about it if it's not. This is just kind of, this is more of the undercoat right now. All right. 
point. It's kind of more of a shadow right here. It's just a tad bit darker. And then it goes into some light. The top of the hood is going to be the lightest part. Um, you can always darken it up, so try to go fairly light. And just note that the like the paint on your palette is going to look a lot lighter than when you put it on the canvas up against all the other colors. So I've added just a little bit of a highlight um, on these different parts of the car just to give it a little bit of shape. Doesn't need to be too much, just enough so where you know kind of where everything is. And then I'm going to come back here on this part. Um, and kind of darken up the front portion of the car. Again, we can tinker with it, you know, as we go. Um, all right, so now that I have the main part of the car in, I'm going to go ahead and do all of the inside before I start working on um, like what's closer. So just like in normal classes, we're gonna work back to front. So I'm going to finish Kind of going to paint and do the inside of the car before I work on the outside of the car. So I'm going to get my small brush and let's work up some of this gray. I actually have a gray that I'm just going to darken a bit. Because um, it's black, 
but because you were seeing it through the windshield and the atmosphere, <laughs> um, it's going to be more of on a um, gray scale. And I think I went a little bit too dark. Add a little bit of water. All right. So this is kind of the back, um, it's like above the back seat, but and essentially you want to just make sure that you cover up the lines that you created in the traceable whether that is the um, whether that's the lines that you painted over or the actual pencil lines like a little seat belt here. And then this whole section up here is also going to be this gray. I think it's a little bit darker when it gets up here. It's kind of hard to tell. Imagine it's darker as you go up because less light is um, being put on it.
It's almost like I'm coloring in a coloring page a little bit. If you're having a hard time um, getting your paint to go into like the crevices of the um, of the um, what am I trying to say of the canvas, try to just add just a little bit of water, and that will help. That will help it move on the canvas. went a little bit too far in on my drawing so because this is still wet I can do this I'm grabbing a different brush and just um, getting it wet and then wiping off kind of just moving back this line And this will just make it easier to go over with um, my white. So this is where I put the line, but I noticed when I was looking at it that it just looked it looks too big. Um, so I'm gonna go over it with some white. And I'll probably have to do a second coat of this, but that's okay. Um, the other option is I could have made this side a little bit larger too. But it's up to you how you want to. If you if you do something where you kind of need to adjust things. That's a couple options for you. Alright, so now that that is all gray, um, we're going to make this a little bit of a darker gray and go ahead and do go ahead and do some of the other things. 
like the mirror is also gray. It's actually kind of hard to distinguish where one starts and where the other stops. And then something that's also gray is this, but I'm going to put a touch of brown in it. Because it's almost like, like maybe it's a red, um, maybe it's a red one that is in the shadow. So it has just a tiny bit of color. A little bit peeking out over here. Let's see, for the rest of the inside of the car, there are a few details. I'm just going to kind of pre-mix this gray again. It's just your black and your white. Maybe a little bit more black. And I'm going to add a couple details. One, this wasn't dark enough, but um, you're going to have a seat belt right here. And on this side, I'm going to make it just a tad bit lighter because I feel like it's in the light more than the rest of it. So I'm just going to lighten it up just barely. And that's just a personal preference. Yours might be fine. And then... Let's see. I'm going to darken this bit up. So kind of just play with those gray colors and everything like that until you get to a point where you like it. I'm going to add one more thing over on the right, which is the, oh, I have to do a second coat first. So I'm going to grab my white. And I only had to do that because I changed the structure of that window. You might not have to do that. While that's drying, I'm also going to do a second coat of my inner tube in here. I feel like I had a little bit too much water in my brush, so it wasn't, it was a little bit translucent. But that's okay, we'll just do a second coat and now it's thicker. Alright. We're almost done with the inside.
we're going to oh I forgot the steering wheel don't forget the steering wheel <laughs> And then that middle piece. All right, so before we go and add the top part, um, I am going to let this dry. We're going to do our inner tubes and then we're gonna come back and put snow on the windshield before we do the outside of the car. So let's do our inner tubes real fast. I'm gonna get out some red. A little bit of a little bit of red. I'm also gonna get out a touch of yellow so that I can make the bottom a little bit off white so that it doesn't blend into the background. Because if you think about it, we know that the inner tube is red and white, but if you look at it in comparison to the um if you look at it in comparison to the the background, it looks a little bit yellow. So, I'm going to take my uh, my filbert, take a little bit of white, dip just a tiny bit in my yellow, and I'm also going to dip a tiny bit into the brown. I'm telling you, a touch is all you need. If it's too dark, then you can just go ahead and grab some more white and mix that in. I'm just going to... There's a little bit of a line on this one. And then I'm just going to add this to the whole bottom. Just make sure you work to cover up that blue line that we created. And I'm gonna dip a little bit into my brown and black. And while it's still wet, I'm gonna put that on the bottom Rinse out my brush and I can blend that a little bit. Just a little bit. It can be rough. Kind of a, a rough blend. You can also take another brush like a dry brush um, and try giving a little bit of um, of a shadow but also this like there's so much texture on these um, on these inner tubes that I feel like you can't go wrong Go in with some white, maybe. Go back. 
back and forth to give it some texture. Okay, I'm going to focus on my red. Um, my base red is going to be a lot darker than this red, so I'm going to grab some of this brown and mix it in. Makes a little bit more of a maroon. To kind of put it a little bit more in the environment that we're in. Because this very, very bright red is like, it's like a color that you would see on a bright sunny day. It's a snowy day. So the base for this red is going to be just a little bit muddier and darker. A little bit more of a maroon color. I like that, so I'm going to wipe off my palette knife. I'm going to just use my small brush and go ahead and just fill in these areas And on the second one back here, I'm leaving a little bit of um, of a line that I created with that kind of off-white color. And it gets a lot darker um, on this one when it gets to the back here. So I just dipped my brush into a little bit of brown and black. I think of a little bit too much, so I'm going to rinse that out and then go back into my red. Just kind of mix it together now. Some of this is shadow and some of it is dirt. There's even some like red spots over here on this one. I'm just going to add those in. I'm going to make a slight tan with some brown and some white. I had a little bit of red in my brush still, so I added some yellow to kind of cancel it out. And I'm going to add some of that brown to the one on the one on the right just adding texture these are 
loved and used. <laughs> and lastly, I'm going to get a little bit of white. And I'm going to add a little bit of this to the top. Some of this is snow, some of this is reflection. And that's pretty much all we're going to do for those. So now that I have that, I'm going to get a, um, go ahead and grab a fan brush if you have one. You can also use a frayed brush. So just a normal kind of maybe an older brush that's a bit frayed. You can do that. That's what I used to use all the time. I'm going to grab some of this and we're going to create some snow. I'm also going to use my other brush because it's a bit softer. Alright, and there's our, there's our snow. I'm going to go ahead and put in the rest of this blue up here.
does go a little bit into shadow so you can add some black to the very top of the car. So I have my blue and then I'm just kind of blending a little bit of black on the top here. bit more of a dark color. Alright. Um, let's see. I'm going to add a little bit more to this side. As it goes kind of over the edge. All right. Um, now I'm going to put in kind of the the outer parts of the window. So I'm going to work from my work kind of from the out from the inside out. So the first part is going to be um, some of these black areas. Just grab your liner brush or just a small brush. If you don't have a liner brush, these lines might be a little bit hard. Um, so just take your time. There's a bug. So there's a line on the inside, and there's also a line that goes down this side.
So one thing I'm just making sure is that I cover up the lines that I created. I'm covering up my traceable. So really just make sure that there aren't any traceable lines that you can see. That's the only, what I would say, that's the only downside to a traceable is that, yeah, you really just have to make sure that you cover up all those lines. I missed a spot with my blue, so I'm just going to come back here and put that in. And then I have one more black line over here. So this is the top black line. So over here, there's going to be a bunch of lines right here because of the the like the rim of the windshield. So the bottom line is actually a little bit further from the edge. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in um, the rim, uh, which is going to be in white. So, so just grab your pure white, grab a little bit of water, mix that together, water it down. And you're just going to add this all around the rim. Wherever there's a rim, you're going to add it.
as you can see, it is slowly starting to come together. Once you start putting in some of the details, it really starts to look like a car. Um, while we're at it, we can go ahead and put in these, um, windshield wipers. And now you're just going to do a second black line around, um, around the white in certain areas and then also um, down the doors. I'm just putting in the, um, like the mirror, the thing that the mirror is on. I don't have a correct name for it, so I apologize. Go ahead and put in your lines for the car doors. And then there's a very faint line that goes down the bottom. And then notice that right here I go out a little bit to help give the illusion that there's like this line here.
All right. I'm going to go ahead and move on. I'll come back to um, the blue part of the car, but I want to give attention to the all of the dark parts and the grays. A lot of this is black, so I'm going to get out my black. And you can be as detailed with this car as you want. Um, you don't have to do all the details that I'm doing. Um, but... Or you can do more. So I'm going to do some dark areas and I think I might need to switch to a smaller brush. Yeah. So using um, a combination of your black and your white to give highlights, you're going to just pretty much cover the whole base in black. Making sure again that I cover up my traceable line. I'm not going to worry too much about the bottom because I'm going to add like snow in areas. make a medium gray that I'm going to put in the middle here. And you can always come back and add some detail, but right now I'm just going to, while it's wet, I'm just going to add some black lines insinuating that um, there's just like the axle in here. And then some highlights. going to do the same thing over here except I'm going to start with the middle this time
just going to add a medium tone. I can come in and add some highlights in a little bit. And just like. Kind of like that. a little bit go in with my black this part is very dark It's a little bit lighter over here. And of course, this is black. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about the very, very bottom of it because I'm going to add some snow on it eventually <laughs> when we get there. So a little bit of a highlight on the front part of the tire. There's that. Still kind of just blending, blending that out. And then there's a little bit of black here underneath for the very back tire. And 
and then under here as well. These are really just all shades of gray. I'm gonna go ahead and put some snow on the back here. I'm gonna make some dirty snow with some black, white, and brown. Just to put up inside this bumper. A little bit of texture back there. Maybe some more in here. And then I'm gonna get some more brighter snow. And Put it on the front of the tires. I'm doing a bit of, of dotting as well as um, just kind of scraping over. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a um, watered down black 
to give a little bit of a darker shade. feel like don't cover it all up because you can still have some of those highlights in there especially when it gets to like the edge you can add some texture outside of it I'm also going to, with some very watered down paint, add just a little bit of a hill back here. I just have a tiny bit of brown. I'm going to mix in some white here. Now bear in mind, I have barely anything on my brush. Go in with some white. You can cover up anything that's a little bit too saturated. But we'll need to finish the background before we can do the black here. Again, I have barely anything on my brush. It's pretty much just all wiped off. I'm just adding some snowy texture around it. The background's pretty much finished now. Obviously we still have maybe about a half hour left. Um, if you need to go, that's totally fine. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this. If you need to come back, that is, um, you can do that. All of, my, all of my classes do stay up. So if you need to come back and finish, no worries. Um, hi Janet, popping in to say hi. Um, I'm going to do the bumpers and the grill. I 
there's just a little bit of black on the side. Um, now most of this grill is going to be um, close to white. So I'm just grabbing white and using the just the amount of black that's already on my brush. And I'm just going to fill this in and then we'll add the details once the base coat is on there. Right now I'm just doing a wash so that I can get a base coat of this kind of light grayish white. Actually, this is going to be the blue color under here. Because it's dirty, it's so grayed out, I missed it. going to kind of just clean up this line and clean up the bumper because it's a little bit too big so I'm just going to clean that up and then add any other dark parts. So it's gonna be a little bit of a dark line here. I think the best part to explain the process for doing something like this is to take it in little bits and pieces, just tackling it one little thing at a time. And then I can always come back here once this is dry and add my white highlight.
All right, while that's drying, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of texture to the blue car. So I'm going to grab some blue and some brown. And with a dry brush, I'm just going to give it some texture and some darkness. It's kind of old and resting a little bit. I'm just using a dry brush, which means there's not a whole lot of, there's not very much um, paint on my brush. I'm going to add some dark texture here, maybe some texture that's coming up. some lighter texture so I'm gonna go over it with some whitish grab a little bit more of white and I'm still trying to maintain that like line that's right here Can even add add in some darker areas. Just have fun with it, play around with it. There's a line here down the middle. It's a little bit further up. Like I need even more of a highlight on the front here. Just a tiny bit this line back. I feel like it gets a little bit darker close to the areas
<laughs> I'm glad. There's a little bit of a rust spot, so if you wanted to um, add that, you could. But like I said, you can add as much detail or not detail as you want. I think I might add a couple more rust. I'm going to grab some black. Add this line. Alright, I'm going to finish up by just adding the different highlighted areas. Adding white to the lights. over here still making sure that I cover up um, that I cover up my lines If you have something like this and you want to blend it, you can take a dry brush, one that you haven't used yet, and if the place is wet, then you can just kind of rub around and blend that together, almost like a, almost like using a blending tool. So I'm like, oh, I want to add more darkness to this area, then you can switch brushes and you can blend it. Do it at the bottom. And that's a really useful tool um, for when you need to blend stuff. take a medium to dark gray and kind of fill in all of the dark spots in here.
going to make the middle part of this just a tad bit darker. And then going to do the same thing over here. We are in the home stretch. Um, I'm going to add my blackish to dark gray on top here. It's, it's part of the bumper. And then you're just going to add a couple lines in some of these different places. Some of it is to add like creases, some of it's to add shadow. going to add just a little bit of dark blue so I'm going to get some black and mix it with my darker blue and just add some kind of dusty dirty blue to the bottom of this bit of a white line here and then what we get to do is 
put in a ton of lines for the grill. <laughs> so this will be a tad bit time consuming, but it's worth it in the end. Actually, I think before I do the lines for the grill, I'm going to put in um, put in a layer of white right here so that I can come and do the letters when it's dry. I think that this is the last bit, I think. Just going to Still working on the grill. If you have a little bit of water, you can get a little bit of that black and give a little bit of a shadow. Oh, 
more highlight. With some very watered down paint, um, I'm just giving the lights a little bit of um, texture for like the inside. And I'm just giving some highlights and lowlights. And then, oh, the last thing that we'll need to do um, after we finish this is we still haven't done the rack. So I'm going to give this a coat of red. We're almost done. This one was a very detailed one, which I thought I could get done in two hours, but it looks like I mean, obviously, it's been longer than two hours, so. But here is the red tag. There's the black line on the other side. going to put in the the mirror if you haven't yet already done that And, and for this all in one swoop, I can just put the highlights and the low lights. I won't need to do a second coat on this little guy. Let's go ahead and put in our rack.
And for this, you'll just want to make sure that your lines and angles go the same. It would be very, it's very easy to get, um, to get them off. So all of the lines that are going at an angle down here all need to be the same angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this black, a tiny bit of brown, and I'm going to fill in this area. to be the darkest shaded area. Just going to So I ended up going back over that thin line of white.
gonna do another coat of the red on the bottom here because it's a little bit see-through And to finish up, all we have to do is put in our numbers. We put a couple more highlights. I'm going to use my small brush some questions how often do you stream um, I stream every other week um, so I stream um, bi-weekly but then on the off weeks I uh, teach for my patreon and then the other question is how many paintings have you made oh gosh I have no idea a lot <laughs> a lot a lot <laughs> I mean as you can tell I have a full wall and that's not even that's not all of them by far just gonna see if there's any other details that I would like to add I think I think I'm good we've been here for a while now I'm just adding a little bit more texture and kind of old and dirtiness 
to it all. Probably add some highlight to the All right. I think I'm going to call it. Um, but yeah. All right, um, I'm going to call it and I'm going to be done for now. I will see you in a few weeks. I think we are doing um, the rose next. So if you've never painted a rose before and you would like to paint with me, um, that one's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and just sign it. I think I'm going to sign it in blue. I think you'll be able to see it in the white, but it won't be distracting. Um, I don't need to sign it on here, but um, I'm going to sign it and I'm also going to sign off. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your um, evening or morning whenever you're painting this. And um, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.